Hey homeschoolers, I'm Melissa Webb, former full-time classroom teacher and homeschool mom turned full-time business CEO and encourager to homeschool families everywhere. I want to give you sound, educational, practical tips at the same time making sure that you're enjoying the family journey that you are on. So if you are looking for a place to be encouraged and inspired, you have found the perfect podcast. Homeschooling is a work of heart, is truly the perfect place to start. So welcome, let's jump in. Hello friend, did you see my repost on Instagram? I think it goes on to Facebook too. It was someone's very funny words of wisdom and it said, every time I try to eat healthy, Along comes Thanksgiving, then Christmas, summer, Friday, or Wednesday, and ruins it for me. (laughs) I love it. I thought that was hysterical, so I had to share that. It is December, and I think I am still full from Thanksgiving. (laughs) Is that possible? I think I am. Um, But here's the thing. I know as we are in this very delightful and delicious month of December, while I know I could figure out some ways to be healthier through this holiday season, and I know that I probably should, I'm not really sure what that would look like. And it can be exhausting to even think about that right now. Can you relate to what I'm talking about? I will tell you, this other thought was rolling around my head this morning as I was on my walk and I was thinking, you know, I know I should record the podcast today, but I have so much to do. I have such a long list. Maybe I should do it later. When could I do it? Could I do it maybe later tonight? Maybe I, maybe I could fit it in tomorrow. I think if I did it first thing, are you feeling me? Do you know what this feels like when your brain is so full of these indecisions, you feel exhausted just because there's so much going on up there. (laughs) There's actually a name for it. It is called decision fatigue. Decision fatigue. It's a real thing. By definition, it's just this mental or emotional strain that a person will feel when they have to make too many decisions. Basically, it just drains our mental energy. And if we go back to Psychology 101, we have our primal brain, also sometimes called the reptilian brain, which has three main goals to make sure we are seeking pleasure, that we are avoiding pain, and that we are conserving energy. That primal part of our brain, the old brain, is a really important survival brain. It's the flight or fight type of thinking. Its goal is just to keep us alive. So we're going to seek pleasure, avoid pain, and conserve energy because who knows? We might be attacked by a ferocious lion later today. (laughs) Obviously we won't, but our brain wants to do those three things, and especially that conserving energy makes it so that we don't make decisions because we just need to conserve our energy. So if you're like, I know exactly what you're talking about, Melissa, this whole indecision can be exhausting. It is a real thing. Nothing is wrong. It's very normal. But here's what I want to talk about. Since we have a prefrontal cortex, the front part of our brain, right where your forehead if you, where you're, if you put your hand where your forehead is, that part of the brain right behind your skull, that's the smarty pants of our brain. And with intention, we can actually master decision making. Isn't that great to know? And I want to help you. I do. Because that exhausting indecision that we allow our brain to kind of ruminate on can actually be managed And to do so requires, quite simply, just deciding. Make some decisions on purpose, intentionally. We can do that. I think we would all agree that we plan our lives and our lives do not plan us. 
I know some of you are like, no, my life plans me. I feel like my kids' lives plan me, right? I feel like our family calendar plans me. But somebody had to plan all of that, right? Like you're choosing to drive to the grocery store, or prepare meals, cook, clean up your kitchen, or maybe you're choosing not to. But my point is, we don't wake up in the morning and wait for life to move our bodies for us, to choose our decisions and thoughts for us, to make our plans. No, we do that. We're the ones who plan our lives. Our lives do not plan us. So even though there are times where we know certain things are good for us, eating well is good for us. Do we all agree? Sure. Exercising, good, lots of benefits. Even though we know these things, are we always doing them? Are we making time for them? Often not. Why? Because of indecision. I don't know when I would do it. I don't know when I would squeeze that in. I don't know what a good eating plan should look like. I don't know when I could prep my meals. All the indecision. And here's what I think is actually quite funny. We make no time for those things, eating well and exercising. I'll stick with those examples for a second. And then we're frustrated because we don't see any positive changes. <laughs> or maybe we're even facing negative results. And then we're surprised. Why can't I figure this out? I'm here to tell you. It's because we've been indecisive. We've not been planning. And indecision is more exhausting than planning is. You may not believe me, but I'm going to prove it to you. <laughs> it's true. Now, homeschooling our kids is like this as well. Do you find yourself saying things like, we should have gotten more done today. I should have been better planned today. But I just don't know how we can get everything done. The thing is, if you're homeschooling with indecision, just like you're living your life in certain areas with indecision, you will actually feel more exhausted and more frustrated than if you had planned some things out. And worst of all, I believe we as moms, parents, we can miss out on some fabulous opportunities had we just planned better. There is research that backs me up on this, by the way. I don't want you to think I'm just pulling this out from my life experiences, although my life experiences with 30 years of teaching and 30 years of parenting <laughs> my own children. The thing is, I can tell you while research backs this up, Life does too. Indecision, in my experience, but also according to the Harvard Business Review, they did a study on this, indecision leads to lower productivity. And with homeschooling, that means you're missing some of your child's learning goals. We don't want to do that. So scheduling actually boosts efficiency and it reduces that decision fatigue. So I know, I know, I know, because I hear this from parents all the time. They'll say things like, you know, we just don't want that learning environment where we're stuck in a seat, stuck at a table. We want a free-flowing learning environment. Hey, I'm all for that. I am not saying you need to sit your child down for seven hours a day. Mm -mm. But there's a difference between a free-flowing learning environment filled with indecision which, you know, sounds nice. We just, we live this unstructured homeschooling experience. That type of learning and that type of unstructure can actually lead to less learning. Like I said, I am all for scheduling free time, getting in a comfy place, changing your learning to different places in the home or taking learning outside. Absolutely. But here's what I'm saying. You need to decide when you do that and where you do that ahead of time. That is my belief. It's this purposefulness that will give you such a sense of freedom and feelings of great success and accomplishment. Who doesn't want that? There was a mom that I was a facilitator for years ago, and I loved when she would show me her schedule. Every day, five days a week, she'd schedule like we take lunch from this time to this time, and she'd give them a good hour for lunch 
And then after lunch, there was another hour blocked in. And this was their quiet time. Now there was no electronics allowed. You could, but for her, no electronics were allowed. It was just quiet time. She had five children. She said it's her favorite time of the day. Quiet time just meant everybody could do whatever they wanted, but there was no talking. So even if you played together, it was the quiet game. You couldn't talk while you played together. You could go find a comfy corner and read a book, look at a comic book. You could color. You could play. Maybe there'd be Play-Doh out. Maybe you want to play Legos. You could go take a nap. And it was every day, five days a week. It was free-flowing time and a free-flowing environment for one hour, five days a week. So see, it, it can be planned into your schedule 100%, but it was very intentional. And like I said, her favorite time of the day. She sometimes would even nap, and the kids just knew, leave mommy alone right now, she's napping. <laughs> now here's the thing, I have lots of ideas like that to share with you. I have lots of planning tips and techniques that I would love to share with you. On December 20th, if you're listening to this in real time, that's going to be here in just a few weeks, I am hosting uh, another virtual parent workshop. I do these on a monthly basis, but December's topic is all about how to catch up if you've fallen behind and how to thrive when it comes to intentional lesson planning. So I want you to be sure to check that out. I will link it in the show notes. And if you're like, oh, I would love help with lesson planning ideas, meet me there. I'm going to go much deeper into that. Today, I just want to give you an idea, an idea that you can think about. And of course, I do even have some journaling for you (laughs) because indecisiveness is everywhere. I want you just to take a moment. I want you to think, I'm going to ask you a question. I really want you just to think for a moment. What is a goal of yours that you would love to achieve in 2025? What's a goal you'd love to achieve? It could be in any area of your life, by the way. What would you love to achieve? Maybe you want to start a business. Do you want to write a book? Maybe you take Pilates classes and you're like, I would love to become a Pilates instructor. I've always kind of wanted to do that. Maybe yours is more of an indoor thing where you're like, I just need to organize and simplify my home. Things are just getting out of control. Okay? Now, I want you to answer the next question. What does your plan look like to achieve that goal? What does your plan look like? Now, if you're somebody right now who's your like, a plan? I don't know. (laughs) I wouldn't even know where to start. How does somebody start a business? How do you write a book? If you are somebody who has a goal in your head, but when I say, what's your plan? And you're thinking, I have no clue. I wouldn't even know what to do there. If that is you, spoiler alert, you are far less likely to reach your goal. You are. You're far less likely to reach your goal because you don't have a plan. We need plans. Plans are so good. So I want you to journal today, if that's you, and I want you to list 10 things that are keeping you from starting your business, writing that book, becoming a Pilates instructor, or organizing your home. Okay, I want it. Pick what it is. And just do this for yourself. You're not doing this for me. You're doing this for you. There are obstacles that are in your way. And most likely they're your thoughts. Okay? So write down 10 things that you believe are keeping you from a goal that maybe you've wanted to achieve in 2024, but you didn't do it. Or maybe it's a new goal that you want to achieve. Maybe you've wanted to achieve this goal for 10 years. Let's do it. Let's get it done. It's time. So here's what I believe. Our obstacles can become our action plans. And when our obstacles become the actions, you get things done. Isn't that nice? 
Okay, so again, if you're somebody who's like, oh, no, I know how to do this. I do this all the time. I set a goal. I make a plan. Boom. Then this may not apply so much to you. I'm really talking to you, the mom or dad, who's like, I don't get the things done I really want to get done. This is for you, okay? So you're going to take time today. You're going to write down 10 things. And those obstacles that you believe are keeping you from getting things done are going to become your action plans. So let me give you an example. I always love examples. So let's say you want to organize your home. And the first thing you write down, obstacle number one, the idea just feels overwhelming to me. I get overwhelmed. I think about it and I get overwhelmed. Is that an obstacle? Absolutely. Write it down. Uh, here's a second one. I won't come up with 10. Let me just do two and that'll kind of get the ball rolling. Um, your second thing you could write down, what's in the way of getting you to really organize this home of yours? I don't even know where to start. There's just so much. Kind of goes with that overwhelming, right? But it's the next obstacle you come up with. Where do I start? I don't know where to start. Okay. After you have your 10, I'm going to stop there with two, but you're going to have 10. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to, and, and give yourself a break, like write down those 10, unless you're motivated. If you're motivated, keep going. Otherwise, just write that down and then go for a walk. Go do something else. Go empty the dishwasher. <laughs> Come back to it the next day. If, if it really plays with your emotions, you'll know. Give yourself a break. Come back to it the next day. But when you do come back to it, you're now going to take every one of those obstacles and you're going to turn those into your action plan. So number one was it feels overwhelming. Feelings are created by our thoughts. So that tells me you feel overwhelmed. You have a thought. I'm overwhelmed, right? Or this is too much. Step one is, what are some positive thoughts you can believe? Write down as many as you can think of. Things that come to mind for me, it is possible to have an organized home. I would write that down. Other people have organized their homes. I'd write that down. There are so many free resources out there. There are YouTube videos. There are free PDF checklists. I could find good resources. Write that down. See what I'm doing here? I'm taking that obstacle that was making me indecisive and exhausted, and I'm turning it into a plan. A plan of positive thinking is a great place to start. The second one, you're going to look at your list. I don't know where to start was an obstacle. I'm going to turn that into an action plan. Just start. I'm going to start with the junk drawer in the kitchen. We have a junk drawer in the kitchen. I'm going to empty it all out. I'm going to take it out. I'm going to dump it upside down. And I'm, I'm going to purchase on Amazon or at Target or Walmart or whatever. I'm just going to get some organizer, put it in there. And only the things that, that I want in that junk drawer are going to go back in there. Everything else is either going to get tossed or donated. It's an action plan. This works, which is why I'm sharing it with you. And here's what I will tell you. The people who are listening to this episode and deciding on purpose to make some serious changes and take those obstacles and turn them into action plans, just watch what goals they will achieve this year. Just watch. It's going to be amazing. Because when you do this, the odds have just turned in your favor ridiculously so, ridiculously so, okay? So I just want you to remember this. Indecisiveness is exhausting and it's offering up obstacles, but all of those obstacles can be turned into action plans if you decide to do that. Planning creates freedom. People think that plans are restrictive. I believe the opposite. A plan creates freedom from your amygdala hijack <laughs> that has you feeling paralyzed. A plan creates productivity because you know what you're going to do and when. It's not restrictive. 
It's the opposite. A plan is freedom. I believe it, and I really want you to believe that too. Now, as I mentioned, as we're wrapping up, I am going to host a parent workshop where we're going to go deeper in on this and specifically tie it to homeschooling lesson planning. So if one of your goals this year is to be better in the spring semester with your homeschool lesson planning, you want to come to this. You do. It's a parent workshop. It's virtual, so you can be at home with your nice hot cup of coffee or hot cocoa if you want, maybe even peppermint hot cocoa. <laughs> and here's the thing. It's really inexpensive. It's not free. It's not free. I want real people, no scammers. I want people who are willing to drop down some cash, some cold hard cash for this workshop. Okay, it's only $5. <laughs> I guess that's not a lot of hard cash. <laughs> it's five bucks, but it tells me you're a serious mom or dad who really wants help with this. So yeah, you, you got to pay me five bucks for this. It's kind of like buying me a cup of coffee. I love it, right? And you know what? Wouldn't this be a great gift for the holiday season? Not just for yourself, but you could buy a seat for your best girlfriend. Oh my goodness, I totally think you should. You could be like, hey, I bought us something. Check your calendar. Are you free on December 20th? It's a Friday morning. It's from 9.30 to 10.30 a.m. We're going to get all dressed up. No, you really don't. I'm joking. Stay in your pajamas if you want. <laughs> We're going to meet online this really awesome woman who I've met, and she helps us homeschooling moms, and I want you to join. I think that'd be a really cool gift. And yes, by all means, tell people I'm awesome. I really love it when you say things like that. It makes me feel good. So keep it up. All right, I hope to see you on December 20th. I hope you stop being indecisive because it's exhausting. Let's decide on purpose to have a wonderful holiday season and the happiest of new years. Right on. Well, thanks so much for tuning in and listening this week. Hey, if this was something that you found valuable, don't forget you want to subscribe or follow so that every time a new episode is dropped, you'll be the first to know. And hey, before you go, if you are looking to get some of this academic writing under your belt and outsourced so that it's one less thing freeing you up to enjoy more time with your family, hey, you're going to want to head over to Write on Web. Dot com to see what kinds of resources and materials I have available for you. I will look forward to seeing you there and I will look forward to seeing you here in our next episode. Right on!